Hey y'all, I'm back and I got a notebook, which you might know what that means. Uh, if you've tuned in before, I do a whole series called Science Simplified, where I basically look at research and I break it down, kind of give you the most important parts, and then I also, um, you know, make it really applicable for you in your life. Uh, whether this is just for yourself or family or friends or you coach people, you know, yourself. Now, these videos are usually a little bit more like note heavy, so I have taken notes generally on the paper. Uh, so if you do see me looking at that, it's just because I do want to be concise. Uh, but then the application to it, of course, I can kind of free ball. But I do want to make sure that I say things properly, which is why in these videos, a lot of times I am looking at notes. So just if you guys are wondering what the hell am I reading, these are my notes from the paper. Now, uh, I know that the title was a little bit um, clickbaity, and I normally don't do that, um, but I thought it was really powerful and important because this may be one of the coolest studies and lines of research that I have gotten into lately, and it's all about stress perception and how this can really, really negatively affect you. Um, I'll be completely honest and say that before I had heard about this, I really didn't even know that it existed. Of course, I know that there's people you know, intuitively who look at stress in a good way and there's people who look at stress in a bad way, um, but I didn't even know that there was like lines of research and really just ways of thinking about this. And the way that you think about this can change how you live your life and how things affect you. So I honestly think that this is gonna be one of my newest, like favorite things to really talk about and discuss. Um, I've been talking with my clients about this for quite some time now. Um, just because it is so so powerful. Of course not everybody needs this kind of a talk uh, but there are many people that this does affect and to be quite frank I see a lot of specifically highly negative stress perception people who look at stress in a debilitating way which we'll talk about later who do have these kind of weird undiagnosed issues whether they're gut problems or cortisol like hormone problems or kind of blood sugar issues or kind of a combination and it almost is like this thing that you can't pinpoint from one direct cause or another and sometimes there are direct causes but they are exacerbated by this negative stress perception so i want to dive into this uh, and really tell you you know more about it what the research says and also how you can change this in your life so interestingly the stress kind of research started coming out many years ago, uh, 1908 was the first time they actually talked about the inverted U with stress. Um, basically, stress is enhancing at first and then it becomes debilitating. And then there's been a bunch of different um, things within the research, uh, most notably appraisal theory that kind of came out afterwards. Uh, and then this line of research really kind of takes it a step further and really wants to see, okay, does the perception of the stress itself cause negative or positive things. So basically there's different types of states and you can have a challenge state, um, which is where the individual um, thinks they have enough resources to overcome the um, you know challenge at hand. And then there's threat states where they perceive the opposites, but they don't have enough resources to handle this, um, whether that's mental, physical, monetary, whatever it may be. So that's super interesting and a lot of us know people like that, right? So like I said, intuitively, I kind of knew that this was a thing because we know those people who are really high stress positions, um, but they like look at stress as like a, fuck yeah, I'm gonna handle this, tackle this head on, and they just get it done, right? And they seem to be fine and not stressed out. And then there's people who are always really negative about stress. Oh, I need a break from stress. I can't handle this. This is debilitating me. I'll never have enough resources. And they just kind of have this whole negative perception. And these are the people that we see the negative stress responses with. And I'm not talking down to anybody because that is me in a lot of situations. Um, I've again known this kind of intuitively, so I've been trying to change it, but now having a little bit more concrete ways to change it and just some cool data um, is definitely making me care more about this than just being like, yeah, I'll just stress less. Because stressing less isn't necessarily the answer. It's how you look at that stress. Um, because you could be, honestly, a you could be a person who has fairly low stress in their life, but you perceive it to be an extremely stressful, hard life, and you could have all these negative side effects. And then on the other end of it, you could be somebody who has, for all intents and purposes, a pretty stressful, high stakes life, but you look at it as a positive thing in an enhancing way, and you have absolutely no side effects from it. So it really is powerful, our, like how much our mind controls everything, to be completely honest, you guys. 
So in case I haven't made that clear, <laughs> I do want to go over kind of some of the examples that they wrote about in this paper. Um, so regardless of coping skills and strategies, individuals who believe that stress is enhancing have higher indices of health, performance, and well-being. I mean, can't really get much better than that, right? Um, stress is enhancing mindset also um, creates you creates more openness to feedback, which is incredibly important. Um, and honestly, just changing this mindset is so powerful with stress responses. So just look at these two examples. So let's just say that there's this impending deadline for something at work, right? The stress is enhancing mindset would say, okay, this experience will immediately result in positive outcomes. I'm going to work my ass off to get it done and do the best that I can. In opposition, the stress is debilitating response will be, okay, this experience will deteriorate my health and vitality. I don't know how I'm going to get through this. So that's the kind of mindset that I'm talking about. And it's so, so, so easy to fall into this negative one, especially when we have a lot going on. So a lot of people just kind of get downtrodden with this negative perception and then it just kind of spirals out of control and until you shift that perception it is never going to get better you're not just going to wake up one day and be like oh i'm just so positive all the time i can handle the stress you have to actively think about this and work on this so the authors did an amazing job talking more in depth uh, on kind of the background about everything uh, and in case you guys are wondering it's always in the description of the uh, YouTube box so if you want to read more about this because you like this kind of stuff definitely go go ahead and do it it honestly I find psych research is a lot more digestible than maybe some more like scientific kind of stuff like biochem and things like that so definitely check it out if you are interested in this topic but a little bit more on it and then to the research itself so on the neuroendocrine side of things, um, we have two hormones that are released when we're stressed, cortisol and DHA sulfate. Uh, they are two hormones that completely oppose each other and I would kind of say cancel out, but this is a good thing. So cortisol is negative when it's, so cortisol is positive in the, in the short term, right? Like it's not a negative thing. What's negative about cortisol and what everybody hears about is chronically high cortisol levels um, and that's going to cause like a dysregulation just with a whole bunch of stuff within your body. Um, and cortisol is going to be the catabolic hormone. The anabolic hormone that you know opposes it is going to be DHA sulfate and this actually has a regenerative, re can never say this word, regenerative role in stress. Um, DHA sulfate and specifically. So when you have both of these released in a stressful situation, that's normal, okay? So think of that as, okay, you release cortisol and then you also release DHA sulfate. Now, to get to the actual paper, there were 124 subjects, 65% were female, mean age was 24, university population, pretty common, right? Um, so the procedure, I will lay it out for you guys. Again, you can totally read all this, but I find that it is helpful. So first there was a questionnaire assessing mood, stress mindset, all that kind of jazz. Then they did salivary cortisol and DHCA um, reading, which actually saliva for cortisol measures is great. Um, it's not great for other things, but it is great for cortisol. Um, then they did a three minute video on stress is enhancing or stress is debilitating. Then they repeated the stress mindset measurements. Um, then they did the, um, the social stress test, which was basically a mock interview requiring them to give a speech. So that's obviously pretty stressful for most people. Um, and then during the interview, so this is still part of the you know, number five, during the interview process, there was two groups. So they either had positive feedback, like 30 seconds in. So people were like, you know, nodding and like agreeing with them and like, you know, giving kind of the, you know, positive feedback. And then there was also the negative feedback group. So they were kind of like frowning and, you know, shaking their head. This is all why you're giving this fake interview, right? Then post interview, they um, did some other tests, um, you know, uh, looking at their emotions and things like that, more psych evaluations. They did a second cortisol, um, second saliva measurements, cortisol and DHA. Third, they did cognitive performance tasks, and then lastly, they did another saliva sample. So this was, you know, over the course of obviously a lab visit, and they took multiple measurements at different times. And I don't want to totally bore you guys, um, but I do want to read through some of the really powerful ones. So as far as the hormones and neuroendocrine stuff goes, the cortisol response did not change within the groups. Um, but when um, the groups did have <clears throat> the negative feedback, they did not. Um, secrete DHEA sulfate like the positive group did. So that's super, super powerful. So like I said before, 
cortisol and DHEA should be released at the same time, roughly speaking, um, to get the normal response that kind of cancels out the negatives of stress. Um, but if they had this negative feedback group, they only released cortisol and did not secrete DHEA. Super crazy that literally just how you're thinking about things and the feedback that you're getting. I mean, that is mind-blowing to me. I don't know if you guys are impressed with me, but I am super impressed by that. Um, now, the other biggest finding is that, honestly, one can acknowledge stress as threatening um, while still having an adaptive outcome. So example is having the stress is enhancing mindset might not make something feel less difficult um, or taxing, um, like you might still have, you know, cortisol release and things like that, but the stress is enhancing mindset can improve physiological thriving based on a lot of the other results that they got. Um, so the stress enhancing did increase the positive effects of stress. So like better mood, attention to happy faces was increased, cognitive flexibility was increased, DHEA sulfate response was normal, um, but it did not reduce or buffer the negative effects of um, the stress in either group. So um, it's important to look at this though because stress is unavoidable and that shouldn't be the goal, but stress is enhancing, can magnify the positive aspects of stress. And I think that that is the most important takeaway here, you guys. It's not gonna take away all the negatives and it's not downplaying that anybody is going through maybe a difficult time or something that is so out of their control that feels so, so negative. But what you can control is your mindset around it. And if you look at a stressful situation like, okay, I can handle this. I have the resources for this. This is gonna make me better. You are going to be so much more likely to actually thrive in your life and honestly like i said from a coaching perspective you guys i've seen the craziest stuff um with how people respond and they start to develop these like weird unexplained issues and again not saying that that's the only reason they have those issues but it is augmenting the side effect the negative side effects like a ton so just thinking that everything's going to be better is not the answer and that is not what we're going for here we have to be realistic like life is stressful um, but looking at stress in this positive way is going to be just game changer for any of you guys so start small you're not going to change this overnight especially if you have a whole lifelong of kind of just negative stress perception but the first step to anything is being aware of it so now that you're aware of this if you found this video even remotely interesting click the link in the description box, read the study for yourself, potentially read other studies that they've cited in there as well. This group has done a lot of really cool research in this area, and they also cite some really great um, you know, other research as well that's been done before them. So take a look at that and then start small. You know, Start adding this in. The next time you're presented with something that's really stressful, take a step back when you start going down that kind of neg negative spiral and that just downward path okay, what can I do to control this? How can I look at this in an enhancing way? And I promise you, you're going to feel so much better. Your body will function better, taking on new opportunities and actually getting shit done without being so overwhelmed. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I honestly am blown away by just this one study and I'm so excited um, to you know, start implementing this more in my own life. I already have. Um, it's been hard, but I have been. Um, and I also really encourage you guys and my clients to do that as well. So can't wait to start looking more into this. Um, I'll definitely be talking about this more, not gonna lie, because literally the way that you think can secrete different hormones and affect how stress, like, you know, all these different measurements can affect you. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna learn more about this. So thank you guys for tuning in. Like I said, check the description box for the full link and you'll have a great day.